Hello everybody, this is Pastor Mike Renee, and welcome to our home. And we just wanted to uh, talk to you, encourage you, pray with you for just a few minutes, go over yesterday's word, remind you of some upcoming events. Uh, Good Friday service will be seven o'clock. This Friday night, we want everyone to prepare for communion. That will be a prayer, worship, and communion service as we talk about what Jesus did on the cross for us. This is gonna be a great time. Did you mm-hmm. wanna to add to that? And I also remind you of our virtual life groups. Those are still happening this week. Make sure to get connected and plug in. It's really easy, out of sight, out of mind. When we don't see people, we're not seeing them on a regular basis to kind of like get into our own mode, our own world. We need to connect together. We need to pray together. We need that encouragement of a heart. I was on one last week with the men. It was such a great time of encouragement and prayer. So join a virtual life group. Get connected. Even if you don't live in that city, join the Vacaville one. Join the women's. Join the men's. Whatever you have to do, get connected to a virtual life group. Yesterday, I shared in the message about triumphal entries, and it's easy when we're in lockdown mode to kind of, in the same way, close off our heart. Um, We can close off everything because we don't want to feel pain. We don't want to see pain. And uh, when you live in a situation where you're seeing people go into eternity and uh, you're in a tough Uh, a tough national emergency, uh, our hearts can sometimes want to close off. And I want to say this is is time for uh, opening our hearts to the Lord for his entry into our life. And that requires that we have yielded participation. He told the disciples to go find a donkey colt um, that he knew that he had Uh, basically was prophesying to them about, and they went and they found it. They had to obey the Lord and yield themselves. And there may be some things that God's asking you to yield in participation with him right now. I know that things are close quarters and you've been with your family for a while and uh, maybe your nerves are a little bit on edge. And uh, But the Lord may just ask you to uh, to do something that would change that environment. He may ask you to reach out to someone today that's on your heart. Whatever he's asking you to do, do it. And only say what the Lord is asking you to say. That's what Jesus did. He told them, he said, when you get there, this is what you're to say. The master has need of it. And there's so many things that we miss out on that the master could put into use because we're afraid and that fear barrier keeps us from it. Um, triumphants are not based upon our experience, they're based upon our availability. Uh, I pointed out yesterday that Jesus used a donkey colt, something that had immaturity, stubbornness, had never been ridden before. Um, I, I know from breaking horses and being around horses in my life that the first time you get on a horse or you get on an animal, it doesn't like it, it bucks up. But I thought it was amazing that when Jesus enters a situation, those things that would normally buck up are peaceful, they're pliable, they're submissive. And then we talked about, uh, we talked about that triumphantries are uh, victory laps before the victory. Jesus was coming as the triumphal king. Now he wasn't setting up a physical throne like they thought, but Jesus was coming prophetically. He was coming in the power and his grace and his truth. And as people lined the road, they praised him and they gave him thanks. And all of his friends were excited and all his disciples were excited. But sometimes those relationships can turn. And that's kind of where we want to talk about today is what happens when one day people are praising you and the next day they're turning on you. Yes, that triumphant sound that was released and received by Christ really enabled him to bear up under uh, some tragic relational scenarios. And we find one of them in John chapter 13, as Jesus has gathered with the disciples uh, for a meal. And it says that he shows the full extent of his love and he bows his posture, humbles himself and washes their feet. Now, this is very interesting and amazing to me because it goes on in that chapter to say that Jesus was fully aware that one of the disciples would betray him, set him up tragically, Mm -hmm. 
so to speak, as well as there would be denials and all of them would leave him at his point of need. And Jesus had that triumphant sound over his life so that he could still be forgiving. He had the foresight of knowing what was to come, but oftentimes we don't have that. We experience surprise betrayals. People let us down. They're not there for us, whether it be in a marriage relationship, a friendship. Sometimes our children get older and there's just rejection or there's strain on those relationships. And it can be difficult to keep our heart open for the triumphant entry of God in those scenarios and relational strains. But that's exactly what Jesus models. He wanted us to be able to triumph over the tragedies in our relationships, that we don't have to be overcome with bitterness. We don't have to be overcome with the rejection when those do not receive what we're saying or doing or uh, just oppose us in any way. And so as we reflect on this, and Christ's journey to the cross. These are all aspects that are meaningful and applicable to us that I know for personally in our relationship that we've had to work through. Mm -hmm. When trust is violated, when someone is just not there, they don't listen. Sometimes it's the small things that accumulate over time. And let me just tell you right now, when we're in close quarters with one another, confined, limited in some of the outlets that we're used to having, it can be a, a combustible <laughs> eruption uh, sometimes within our relationships. But even in the midst of that, all it takes is that reset and say, I don't have to stay in this tragic emotional state or relational state. I can transition and allow that uh, resounding triumph to help me deal with it the way that Christ did and the way that God provides for us. So be encouraged. You might not be there right now, uh, but you may be there in the near future. You may know other people experiencing this. And so this can be a real equipping aspect for you in how to help and support them during their relational stream as well. Awesome. And it's so important in that process of relationships that we keep our hearts open. And it's first to the Lord. That's He's right. got to have entry to our hearts or that those relational dynamics will never change. We'll always be playing the blame game. We'll always feel rejected. We'll always, or maybe we play the victim role or we, or mm -hmm. we victimize others. We hurt people because we're hurt. It is so important to let the King of Glory enter in and declare the, it is a prophetic declaration. Sometimes you're walking it out by faith. Um, things don't change in the natural, but if we allow the entry of Jesus, just like that colt right. that was stubborn and inexperienced, when Jesus got on him, he went in triumphal procession. And when Jesus enters our life, we enter into the, the we become captive, captive, our hearts become captive and we enter that triumphal procession in the Lord. So that's, that's so right. good. Well, let's, let's just close in prayer. Uh, let's just ask today that the Holy Spirit would just be in our hearts, that he'd be in our day and, and whatever area of our life uh, relationally, just as Jesus was betrayed, he went through all manners of things, but he didn't sin. He didn't, ma he didn't make the choice to act out when he was rejected. If you're feeling rejected today, whatever it is in your life, Jesus is available. His spirit is available to you. It's all that you need. Allow the entry of his spirit to, to your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you didn't leave us orphaned. We thank you that you didn't leave us alone, but you gave us one that speaks into our life. And there are going to be moments in our relationships, just as, as there was in your son, Jesus, where the people that are closest to us hurt us. They disappoint us. They reject us. And Lord, if we're feeling the sting of that today, we ask for the healing power of your Holy Spirit. And God, may we be able to light Jesus in the middle of those things, even the people who have hurt us, that we can put, or are going to hurt us, Lord, that we can get the towel, the bowl, and still wash feet. 
still have that servant heart, still have that heart that's open and open for the entry of the King of glory, open for the healer, open for the one that took everything upon his body, every rejection, every abandonment, every hurt, every disappointment he took for us so that we could live in victory over it, that we could live that overcoming life Mm -hmm. and we can live in that triumphal entry and procession of Jesus. So God, I ask today that you would do that in our home, you would do it in every home uh, that uh, is listening to this today, that you would do it in every home in this community. There are a lot of people in close quarters. So Jesus, we ask for your spirit, your life, and your grace in our relationships today. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We look forward to connecting with you this week.